heard of the Piasa bird? Tales of this mythical flying creature can be found in the folklore of the Illini. Its name means the bird that devours men. The legend says that it lived in caves along the Mississippi near modern day Alton, Illinois, and it had a taste for human flesh. The Piasa terrorized and decimated many tribal villages, and nothing that the Illini could do. Eventually, their chief, Watoga, learned of the Piasa's weakness from the Great Spirit in a dream, and devised a plan to take this creature out with poison arrows, and he offered himself up as bait to draw the beast out. They were successful, and made a painting of it on a rock face over the Mississippi to celebrate their victory. Do you think this creature was real? Let me know in the comments. Have you heard, have you heard of black-eyed children? According to urban legend, these creepy kids randomly show up knocking at the doors of your home or your car asking to be let in and their mere presence fills people with dread beyond their blacked out eyes there's usually something really off about them sometimes they are seen wearing dated clothing or sometimes people say they have talon like feet are these entities paranormal or something else leave a comment and make sure to like and follow have you heard of black have you heard that there could be a mystery sea cryptid lurking the waters of antarctica Let's talk about the Ningen. There's a saying that we've explored less than 5% of the ocean, so perhaps there's something to this legend after all. In the early 2000s, Japanese fishermen and whale research ships allegedly began to report seeing this creature at night. It's been described as looking humanoid in shape, and they're up to 20 to 30 feet long, and often are reported to have human-like arms, legs, and even five-fingered hands. Could this creature be real, or is it just a case of mistaken identity? Let me know in the comments. Have you heard that there If you see a weird, eel-like flying creature, you might just be looking at the atmospheric beast known as the Crawfordsville Monster. In 1891, two ice delivery men claimed to have seen this very creature in Crawfordsville, Indiana. They called it a horrible apparition, which filled them with dread. Some claimed it was 20 feet long by 8 feet wide and had fins running down its sides. Its most disturbing feature, though, was that it had three jaws with one flaming red eye in the middle of its mouth. Some would see it 300 feet up in the air, wheezing and making plaintive sounds like it was in agony. Do you think this creature is real? Tell me in the comments. If you Did China just reveal that they intercepted signals from an alien civilization? China now has the world's largest radio telescope called Sky Eye, and it might have picked up signs of extraterrestrial civilizations while monitoring several exoplanets. But it looks like the state-backed blog Science and Technology Daily actually deleted the post, and there hasn't been really an explanation as to why. This is more than likely just a case of radio interference as we've seen before with other announcements like this. But what if? Do you think this could be aliens? Let me know in the comments. Did China- All right, it's story time about Skinwalker Ranch. And this is a multiple part series, so make sure to watch through till the end. This enigmatic property in Utah's Uinta Basin is a hotbed of paranormal phenomena and high strangeness. In 1994, Terry and Gwen Sherman bought their dream home, a 512 acre ranch near Ballard, Utah. But their dream home would soon turn into a nightmare. When they first arrived, the Shermans were shocked to find that the home had heavy deadbolts inside and outside of the doors. Even the windows had security bolts. They also found heavy chains outside that looked like they were used to restrain some large animal. To make things more odd, the previous owners had a stipulation in the real estate contract that there was to be no digging on the property unless they were notified. Shortly after the Shermans moved in, Terry was offloading a box from his pickup truck when a massive wolf appeared on the horizon. And don't forget to like and follow for part two. All right, story time for Skinwalker Ranch, part two. This wolf was gray in color and had chilling blue eyes. It headed towards Terry and his family, who were all outside. The animal appeared incredibly tame and then began to approach the Shermans. Nearby was the Sherman's cattle corral, where Terry had recently unloaded several of his prize Angus calves. The wolf got closer and approached Terry's oldest son, who was six feet tall, and this wolf was so large that it came up to his chest. Terry's son reached out and pet this wolf. As the family spoke about what to do about this animal, with lightning speed, it suddenly made a single bound to the nearby cattle corral. One of the calves had stuck its head out of the bars, which was soon found in the jaws of this massive wolf. As the wolf tried to drag the calf through the corral bars, Terry ran and landed two powerful kicks to the side of it. His adult son joined him with a baseball bat, 
but their pummeling did nothing to concern the wolf. Like and follow for part three. Skinwalker Ranch, part three. Terry yelled to his other son to grab his magnum, and when it arrived, he emptied three rounds point blank into the creature, and it had no effect. Terry fired three more rounds into the beast's upper abdomen. This was finally enough for the wolf to release the calf and walk away. This creature then looked back at Terry from 10 feet away, showing no signs of discomfort. He then fired another round aimed directly at its heart. It was completely unfazed. It retreated another 40 feet and just stared back at the Shermans. Terry then told his sons to grab his 30 out six and once in hand, he took aim and hit the wolf's shoulder. Still, the wolf looked unconcerned. Terry then aimed for its chest cavity and made a direct hit even visibly tearing a chunk off of the beast. But to the Sherman's horror, the wolf still stood, staring at them with its ice cold eyes. It then trotted off into the distance. Like and follow for part four. Story time for Skinwalker Ranch, part four. Determined to put an end to this creature, Terry and his younger son took chase and tracked this creature for miles. As they struggled to make way through the underbrush, the wolf seemed to be increasing the speed and distance between them, despite the amount of punishment that it just took. Eventually, they followed the wolf's massive tracks to a spot 60 feet from a creek, and they simply stopped in the mud, like the wolf had vanished into thin air. In the months that followed, the Shermans witnessed crop circles on their ranch and other bouts of high strangeness like UFO and poltergeist activity. They also dealt with the systemic and repeated mutilation of their cattle by some unknown force that was of surgical precision and left no trace of blood. Like and follow for part five. Story. Sorry for the wait. I got a little busy for a few days, but here's Skinwalker Ranch part five. Some weeks later, Terry's wife Gwen was driving her gray Chevette car back to the ranch from her job. She arrived at the gate and opened it up. Just as she got back into the car, she saw it. It was another wolf of similar stature to the seemingly bulletproof wolf that had caused trouble before. It came up to her and towered over her car and would look in with its icy blue eyes. Nearby, she noticed another animal, and this one appeared like a weird dog and had a head that was far too large for its body. Gwen came to the thought that perhaps one of her neighbors from the local Ute tribe may have had wolves as pets or some kind of wolf-dog hybrid. So she decided to go to the tribal office in Fort Duchesne the next day. When Gwen asked about the wolves, she was just met with blank stares. As it turned out, nobody owned wolves in the area, or any kind of wolf-dog hybrid for that matter. In fact, wild wolves hadn't been seen in that area for close to 70 years. The last known wolves were eliminated in 1929, and this was the mid-1990s. So if there are no wolves in the area, what were these creatures? Like and follow for part six. Sorry for- Okay, everyone, the Amarillo Zoo in Texas is asking for help in identifying this creature here that was caught on camera on May 21st. They're calling it the UAO, or Unidentified Amarillo Object. Some theories say that it was a dogman, or a werewolf, or El Chupacabra, or someone in a suit hoaxing the whole thing. What do you think it is? Okay. All right, here's part six for Skinwalker Ranch. Now, some of you have asked for uh, some longer form of videos, so I'm gonna go over a few different stories in this one. Make sure you watch through all the way to the end. After some time, it seemed, the large wolves disappeared from the property, but high strangeness would continue to haunt the Shermans. In one encounter, Gwen was out for a walk in the early evening on the Mesa, on the north side of the property, to look at the stars. The air was still. Something massive flew by her. She instinctually ducked out of the way, and she thought it might have been a bat, but the disturbance that it created was far more significant than something like a bat would create. After five minutes, whatever this flying thing was, flew by her again, causing her to duck yet again. She tried to see what it was, but there was nothing there. The longer they lived at the ranch, the stranger things became. Both Terry and Gwen would experience the missing object phenomenon. For example, Gwen would be cooking in the kitchen, and she'd leave a utensil in one spot, and leave the kitchen to do something else for a moment, and when she returned, the utensil had vanished which eventually caused her to question her sanity. In Terry's instance, there were times where his tools would go missing, like a 70-pound post-digging tool or other smaller tools that would disappear without a trace and would cause the whole family to go into frenzy searching. And this would happen multiple times per week. So beyond weird creatures and missing objects in their home, there was also UFO activity on Skinwalker Ranch. 
During the first incident, his nephew was visiting for a few in the city, and he wasn't quite used to being out in the countryside. One night, Terry brought his nephew and one of his sons out for an evening walk around the ranch, determined to get his nephew out there and to break him of his fear. Well, this was probably one of the worst nights to do it. Things were going fine until Terry spotted lights passing through some trees on one corner of the ranch. He thought it was trespassers in an RV, so Terry and the boys went to confront them. When they got within 200 yards, the RV began to move and it put distance between them. Terry was confused and there was no way the people in the RV could have seen them coming. Terry and the boys started to jog and catch up to the vehicle. They noticed this RV didn't seem to be jostled by ruts in the ground as the lights remained steady. To Terry's shock, the lights suddenly rose up over a fence. They tried to pick up the pace, but the lights only moved faster. These lights were about to reach the western border of the ranch, and Terry, not realizing this might not be an RV, thought there was no way it could get over that final barbed wire fence on the property. And then, the unthinkable happened. They all saw the lights on the RV lift off the ground and move slowly and silently to the top of the tree line some 50 feet up. It was then that they could finally see what this thing was. An oblong object, roughly the size of a fridge, the UFO continued to travel away from the ranch and eventually disappeared from view. Terry then brought his terrified nephew and son back to their house, not knowing what it was that they saw. And this wouldn't be the last time they saw this UFO. All right, let me know what you thought of those stories. There's a lot more high strangeness involved with Skinwalker Ranch. So if you like those stories and you want to hear more, make sure to leave a comment and like and follow for more. It's been a minute. Let's get weird. It's been a Hey, I'm back. Did you know that there is a non-human intelligence here on Earth? So, Lake Baikal in Russia is the oldest and deepest freshwater lake in the world. And beyond that, it's been a hotbed of UFO and USO sightings for years. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, a number of declassified documents revealed some shocking evidence and stories like this one. In 1977, two Russian scientists were on a submersible vehicle some 1,200 meters below the lake's surface, carrying out experiments in the pitch black. Suddenly, a pair of bright lights out of nowhere illuminated their vehicle and turned off just a moment later. No other known submersibles were present, but the researchers knew that they were not alone in that lake. Hit the plus if you want to learn more about the aliens of Lake Baikal and other alien encounters. Hey, I'm back. Here's part two for the aliens of Lake Baikal. Now, here's where it gets crazy. In 1982, seven Soviet naval divers were conducting exercises in Lake Baikal about 50 meters down, and they felt like they were being watched by something. After some time, the divers decided to look to the side and noticed there were several alien humanoid beings observing them. These beings were said to be nine feet tall, and the only thing they had on them were tight-fitting silver suits and helmets over their heads. The divers then received orders from the surface to capture one of these entities. As the divers approached these beings, one of them pulled out a device that activated some force which pushed all the divers immediately back to the surface. This caused all the divers to get decompression sickness, and without immediate military aid being in such a remote area, only four of them made it. Just what is going on at Lake Baikal? Like and follow if you want to learn more about UFOs and aliens. Here's part two. Have you heard the theory that the Earth might be hollow and that there's an advanced civilization living on the inside? This is the Hollow Earth Theory. For millennia, different civilizations have had legends that the inside of our planet is this utopian paradise which some call Agartha. Several theorists proposed similar ideas when magnetic anomalies were found in different parts of the world. Most believe there's an entrance at the North Pole, the South Pole, and in the Himalayas. After World War II, the United States sent notable polar explorer Admiral Byrd on Operation High Jump to Antarctica. Some believe this was a mission to find Agartha and to make contact with the civilization inside who had flying saucer technology. You can listen to the whole story on my new podcast episode that dropped today. Leave a comment and like and follow for more. Have you heard the theory?